Hello friends, welcome back to another video. As I mentioned in last week's video, this week is going to be way less practical and should be far more fun and whimsical. So the project for this week is to turn a thrifted bookcase, bookshelf, that I found that is absolutely adorable into a cat hotel. So my cats, particularly Pip and Peach, which I technically, I have three cats if you guys didn't know that about me already. So my three cats are Pip, Mary, and Peach. We do call Mary Murph sometimes. And Peach and Murph are besties. They hang out during the day. Uh, they're actually kind of act more like siblings, chase each other around, annoy each other, but they tolerate each other's company. Whereas Pip just does not tolerate any other cats right now. Uh, historically, he grew up with Mary slash Murph and they were fine until we tried to integrate all three. And as any other cat owner knows, that is kind of a make or break situation. And we did our absolute best to try and ease them into it, but Pip was just not having any of it. But I wanted to essentially turn this adorable little bookcase into a functional, comfortable sleep spot and also a place where I can store some of their treats, their little crochet hats, which I recently made. They hate them, so I will not be doing a video specifically on those, but I want to showcase the little cat hats on the top shelf. Bottom layer is going to have a planner box with like wheatgrass and uh, maybe some catnip, something that cats can just graze on if they want to. And so that bottom shelf is going to be kind of like a courtyard for the cats. Like when you first enter, um, it's like, hey, here's a little courtyard of grass. And then the next shelf up is gonna be room number one. So I'm gonna make two rooms in this since we have three cats and they don't love to interact. So if our chonky boy Murph wants to be in the bookshelf, um, Peach can also be in there at the same time or Pip who's sitting next to me on the counter can have his choice of which room he wants to be in. So I have room number one on the second shelf and room number two on the third shelf. And then that top fourth shelf, which has like the really cute design, that's gonna be like the kitty cafe. And so it's going to have their little hats on a hat stand, um, like if you were to walk into a restaurant and you give them your hat. And then it's gonna have some cute little jars with treats in it so that it's actually functional and we can give them treats from the cafe. And then I'm just gonna try and decorate around it and speak of the devil. I told you guys, he just, he knows what's happening. I don't remember where I got these from, but I think I was going to use them for a baby mobile I was planning on making and just didn't have time. But they're these little felt bees. Which I did not make. So I know I purchased them. I just can't remember exactly where. Um, and so I'm thinking that I will get little, like maybe not little, but like metal um, rods and then try to cut a little opening and glue them to the top of a metal stick and place them around the planner box. So it looks like the bees are floating over the grass or like buzzing over the grass, which I think is absolutely adorable. So the plan is to have a general vibe for this project to be kind of like an old Victorian inn, but with like a cute cottage core cafe up top. Um, so the prints on the fabric that I chose essentially look like they should be grandma couch prints and same with the little pillows for the rooms. And so we will see how this turns out. And another thing that I'm actually going to try to do is reuse some of that insul insulbrite from my last project. Pip loved it so much because it just essentially reflects whatever, um, like cold or heat is being applied to it. So when a little cat lays on it, it should theoretically reflect the heat back to them. 
and that would allow them to have a nice little self-warming pad to sleep on. I think that's it. So let's go ahead and get started on working on the cushions. Good morning. So today we are going to be working on the different hotel rooms in our little cat hotel, cat inn, whatever you want to call it. And so what I've done is I went out and I've purchased some like, I don't know, upholstery cush cushioning, squishy cushion. Uh, and I cut these into the shape of the um, like bookshelf. And I just used a serrated kitchen knife for the cutting. Uh, everything online said that that would work. And honestly, it worked pretty well. It's not beautiful, but I think once we add the fabric, it's not really gonna matter. And so I just measured these out to the size of each bookshelf and then essentially cut them and rounded the edges just so that there's a little bit more room for uh, like fabric to fill up that space so that when you put the cushion in, it's not too um, small. And so I have different sizes for my upper and lower shelves. It was very like a subtle difference, but I still wanted to be true. So I have those labeled with a permanent marker just so I know. And I've already chosen which design fabric I want to use for the upper versus the lower. So once we have that sewn, it'll be easy to tell them apart. So the plan for today is essentially we are going to lay out the fabric and trace on the wrong side. So we'll have our fabric folded and then trace on the wrong side the shape of the cushion. And then I'm going to add an inch because it's about two inches thick. So if I add an inch, that accounts for one like the top and the bottom half to have, you know, a side. And then once I've added an inch all the way around, I'll add seam allowance. So I'll essentially be tracing three different lines, the initial cushion, the inch to go up the sides, and then the seam allowance on the outside. Um, and I might attempt some tufting. So I bought a covered button set and I have no idea how to use it. So this will be new for me, but if I can figure it out, I think it could be quite cute to maybe have three, one, two, three, um, little tufts to make it look more like a cute little cushion. Um, but we will see if that works out. If not, I'm more than happy just to have it be a nice little bed. I just have a couple chairs, like the one that I do my intro and outro on that my cats absolutely love. And it has like tufted covered buttons on the bottom. So I know that they would love the cushions if they had that little tuft on them. I want to attempt to either in Procreate or on actual like paper, um, create like a outside of a window scene. So like a, I don't know, um, like skyline and maybe like a little garden or, you know, a sunset, something like that so that I can print it off and put it behind. I bought some dollhouse windows that I'm going to paint and put up on the wall of the cat hotel room. So I wanna do the paintings of that. And then I also saw a really cute way to do dollhouse uh, picture frames using cardboard, like corrugated cardboard and thick cardboard, which I have from when I was trying to attempt to do book binding, which I succeeded at, I just never finished my book. So um, I have some of that material that I can use uh, to try and make some cute little picture frames so that I can put some uh, like little artwork up in the rooms and if we have extra fabric from the cushions, I'm gonna try to make uh, little half curtains um, with some tension rods for the individual cat rooms. Um, we have one cat, Peach, who absolutely loves to go like under blankets, inside caves. And so I wanna make sure that I make something that she'll wanna use too, which usually means having some sort of enclosure. So I think that's probably the best way to do that is just to match it with the cushion covers and put it on a tension rod. But now that I've kind of laid out my general ideas and plans, let's go ahead and get started on working on the cushions for the individual hotel slash inn rooms. Okay, so I have two different fabrics that I'm gonna use for the cushions. There's a dark green one and like a tan one with a fun design on it. So let's start with the lower one. It is smaller than the upper one by like a quarter of an inch, I think, on both sides. So let me grab the fabric real quick. Okay. 
Okay, so I have finished drawing the, essentially my pattern directly on the fabric. So I have three lines here. I have the first line on the inside, which is the actual shape of the cushion. An inch outside of that using my handy dandy, what is this one called? Styling design ruler. It has like a curve for armholes and stuff, but I primarily use the straight see-through um, ruler for this, which is super helpful and I highly recommend if you're gonna buy any sort of sewing tool, something like a clear ruler specifically for sewing so you can add seam allowance and just modify patterns. Just a simple straight ruler is amazing. But I essentially added an inch on the outside of the actual cushion and then added in my seam allowance, which I decided to use 3 8 I find this the easiest one for me to keep track of on my sewing machine, but really it's up to you what you wanna use. And so now I just have to cut this out and I have it folded over and attempting to match the pattern as much as possible so that way it looks nice and seamless. And so that's the reason why it's kind of placed where, where it is. Um, I know it's not probably the most efficient use of fabric in terms of placement, but I think this is gonna work pretty good and I can use the scraps for whatever else I might need to use. Um, I always keep my scraps. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and then we will work on seeing if this will fit our little cushion. So I have some leftover Insole Bright from my last project. Let's see if we can find a way to make two cushions out of this fabric. I'm gonna put this off to the side for a minute and I'm going to essentially check and see if I can fit both of these foams on the insole braid, and I think I can, because really I only need it on that top part, so essentially what I would do is I would cut out the insole braid that matches the foam and sew it onto the inside of this on that first inner line that I made, so that way it's only covering the top. And then I would do the same thing for the second one and kind of flatlining it like I did in the last project. And that way it's only on the top and not on the sides. And it looks like I should have enough room to do it that way. I just have to draw it out and cut it out. So I'm going to draw the shape of the cushion onto the insole bright, cut it out, flatline it to this guy here, and then I will put it all together and leave that top stitch open so that we have a nice little pouch, but the pouch will be insulated with some warm, cozy stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I will meet you back here when it's time to flip the cushion inside out, and then we will start on cushion number two. We are back from sewing the little packet together and I'm very hopeful that the cats will actually like this because the extra insole bright that I haven't cut out yet, just look at where Mr. P is. So that is a hopeful sign that they will like the little kitty inn slash hotel. So this is kind of what the packet looks like. So it has the insole bright flat lined on the top layer and then I have left one side open so that we can turn it out and hopefully stuff the cushion in. And then I think I'm just gonna hand sew the edge um, together to close it. So even though this is just for a cat cushion, I'm still going to press the seams open so that way hopefully I can get the best fit. It appears this process is working quite well, which is exciting. So essentially the first cushion is stuffed and just has the hole open. To put this in here, I essentially just used it, like if you've ever had to put a really fluffy pillow into a small pillowcase, that's kind of what this was like, but it ended up working out quite well. Um, the, the edges, the rounded edges have a little bit more room than 
is needed. Like you can see it kind of puffs out here, but honestly, that's probably because the foam isn't perfectly rounded. And it's hard to capture that when you're making like a little makeshift pattern. I was trying to pattern match um, because this design is noticeable enough that I just thought it would be fun to try and get it to look right. And I think I succeeded again. Um, now that I have some practice, I think it's a, a bit easier. Um, but you can see the patterns match up pretty well on both sides. So a little update for you guys, since you were so nice about my first week teaching, it went very well, thankfully. Uh, the first class I had feedback and that was great. Um, my advisor said I did great on the first day. Uh, she wasn't there for my first like lecture this year. And so I felt like it went pretty well. I essentially put a lot of effort into my uh, like design of my presentation. I used Canva and so we were talking about the introduction to insects, which essentially means going back in time and talking about uh, essentially how insects began, when they started, when they evolved. And then we also talked about other arthropods, which other arthropods are like lobsters, spiders, centipedes, millipedes, that kind of stuff. Uh, and so we talked about them and the different classes within arthropoda, which is really like a good foundational point. This class doesn't require you have any background in entomology. So we start from the very beginning, even if some of our students have had multiple entomology courses. And so this week we're delving a little bit more into insects and their morphology, and I think possibly mating and reproduction. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the schedule. Um, but I have been working on the, the PowerPoints. And so I'm excited and I'm glad that the first couple classes are out of the way. It kind of takes some of the nerves away once you have done it a few times and you're getting good feedback. Um, so just wanted to give you guys a little update on that. Okay, so now that I have my entire cushion essentially assembled, I have hand sewn the edge shut and now I've essentially marked the placement of the buttons, the covered buttons that I would like. And so I have some button thread and an upholstery needle or like whatever, a big needle with a large eye on it. And I went ahead and I threaded one end through the top button. And then I need to essentially take both ends and thread it through the eye of this needle. And then I can push the needle through the marked spot and pull to make sure that both threads go on the bottom like this. And then I take my other little button and I do the same thing essentially on this side by threading one end of the thread through. And then you can tie a slip knot to the hole until it's tufted in the, the level of tuft that you'd like. And I'm gonna take my scissors and just cut them. So there we have our first little tuft. In other news, my 2024 tattoo plans are pretty minimal this year. Uh, I really only have one tattoo plan, technically two, but one session planned. And it's actually this upcoming Thursday. So I'm pretty excited. By the time that this video is up, I will have had the tattoos. Um, for a couple days and I am pretty excited by it. I'm going to my favorite artist and she's doing a like Art Nouveau shin pieces with like floral designs and some sort of insect incorporated. Uh, I asked specifically for something that would have been popular during that time, which is primarily like dragonflies or uh, orthopterans. So uh, 
grasshoppers, that kind of stuff, or beetles. Those were primarily the big ones during the Art Nouveau era. And she's done a couple pieces that were similar to what I was looking for, which is why I was so excited to book an appointment this time. She has done my hobbit holes and my little frogs on my arms, and then also the little arm shoulder thing that wraps around the side. The next time I have a video, I will have my 2024 tattoo done. And I kind of always try and do it during the winter because um, then by summer I can wear what I want to wear and just wear SPF over it because it's already healed. Because where I live, it is very hot in the summer. So you can't really get away with wearing pants or long skirts without being extremely miserable. Okay, so the bed number one is completely finished. I just have to do the pillows, but I'll show you guys the tufting up close. So you can kind of see little three buttons. One, two, so there's another one up here. But yeah, so I think it turned out quite nice and now I get to go put it in the cat hotel. Okay, so mini update. Here they are in their retrospective shelves. So we have the one on top and the one on bottom. But the next step is to work on the little like decorations on the, that will go inside of each of the rooms and also work on the pillows. So I'm gonna try and make some miniature photo frames out of cardboard. I saw somebody do this for a dollhouse and I thought it looked perfect. So I think I'm going to do three inches by two. So three by two, I think is probably the best proportion. Cause there's also, I have some windows coming for the hotel rooms, dollhouse windows. I don't want the picture frames to be too much bigger than the windows. So I think that would look weird. So I'm going to try and do three by two and see how well that works. Okay, and then I'm gonna make the inside part of the frame. So the frame itself is going to be three, uh, let's see, a quarter of an inch. Okay, so I have my little picture frame cut out. I'm going to use my rotary cutter for the outside bits. I'm gonna see if I can find a box cutter so that I can try and cut out the opening for the actual like picture. I have my two picture frames that I made out of cardboard ready to be painted. So I just did little hot glue dots. Um, they don't look great. But I'm hoping that once I put paint over them, it will look better. So I have those kind of set aside. And I think I'm going to attempt to make this greenish color for the top one. Which I think is just going to be some of this sap green and maybe a touch of Palfo green. Let's see how close of a color we get. Okay, not bad. So I think that's a decent color match. It's a little vibrant, but I'm gonna go ahead and go in with one coat to see how I feel. Okay, so I have the first round done and I think it's actually pretty good color match. I'll probably do two coats, but I'm gonna wait for this one to dry while I mix up the color for the bottom one, which I think I'm gonna try and do like a cream that matches the green little thing. So 
To add some finishing touches on the cat hotel, I purchased this moss table runner that has like a lattice backing and just looks quite natural. And I'm going to cut this down to the width and length of the bottom cubby. So I'm going to cut this and that should be 27 inches by 10, roughly 10, a little under 10. And I'm going to cut that out. And on each side, I have a little water fountain I'm gonna put in the center. And then on each side, I have these cute little planter boxes I got, little pots. And I'm going to put some cat grass in one and some catnip in the other. And they're gonna be on either side of the water fountain on that bottom shelf. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to size and start getting everything put together. Okay, hi Mr. P. For the next part, I'm going to, well first I put on my little apron I made a couple months ago, I think it was last year, and I have grabbed soil from the garage. And I'm going to take my pots and set the plants aside. And I'm going to start with the grass first. It's not doing too well. I don't think it's been watered much. But I'm going to break up the roots just a little. It's probably as much as I can get out of that one. But Pip is loving all of them outside of their boxes. But we are almost finished with the cat hotel. We will be ready for the reveal. everyone so a little bit of a wrap up from the kitty hotel so I think it turned out really cute uh, and it's honestly exactly what I was envisioning it has the cute little rooms it has the little uh, like curtains and probably my favorite part is that bottom layer I originally thought I was just gonna use a planner box but when I went out to purchase one there just wasn't anything short enough where I felt like the cats could like walk up to it and actually graze and so the idea came to me to have a little fountain in the center and then the two plants on the side. And I think that's the best option that could possibly have happened. And wait, I want to introduce you to one of my other cats. This is my other orange cat, Chonky Boy, AKA Mary Murph. And he was part of the two cats that I had in college. Both Pip and Mary lived together, um, but he doesn't love being held. As you can see, um, poor little guy has asthma. So if you didn't know, yes, cats can get asthma. Yes, they have a tiny inhaler and chamber. It's a whole thing, but we are working on getting him just a little bit thinner so that it helps with his health stuff. So I think it turned out quite cute. Uh, like I said, bottom part is probably my favorite. And 
I'm really hopeful that the cats will actually use this. Uh, I have some photos of them using it uh, when I first put it together. However, it's one of those things where like cats, if they know that you want them to do something or are interested in a specific thing, they care nothing about it at all. They're like, whatever, who cares? This new thing, I have no interest. So I'm thinking that if I just give them enough time, they can discover it on their own, use it on their own. It's comfortable, it's got enough room in there, but one thing I probably would have changed in the design process is buying just slightly thinner foam so that they would have more room inside the actual cubbies. Pip's pretty big and so is Murph and so they can get in there, but they can't really like turn around or like move as much or like stand up as much, which might be why they haven't used it yet. Peach fits in it perfectly, as you guys saw in the little um, sneak peek photo. And she likes it, but she's also super timid. And so it, and when I tried to get like photos of her, that was the one photo she allowed before she jumped out of the cubby. And she had been in there for probably at least five minutes before that. So again, it's one of those things where cats just know when you want them to do something. Uh, but I actually, I moved our couch closer to our TV and the cat hotels, hoping that that will encourage them to use it. A big thing is the cats just like being around us and the couch was like all the way back against another wall and there was a huge space between the couch and the cat hotel. So I'm optimistic that now that the couch is closer, I'm not trying to film them all the time and I just give them some space to explore and find it that one random day, they will decide that that's a good place to sleep. Again, cats are strange creatures. They don't like when you give them expensive things or do things for them or buy special things for them. So this was a risk. But as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is like 50% for the cats and 50% just for me. I really just wanted to have a really cute, adorable thing in the, in the corner that at the minimum, like I said, that bottom shelf is super functional. They use it all the time. They eat the grass, they drink water out of it. And maybe they'll discover the little hotel rooms and start to use them. Um, but I had a lot of fun with this project. It was kind of just something to give me a break from doing clothing for myself. And it was kind of fun just to like decorate and do tiny hobbies that I hadn't done before. like. Making those cute little um, like picture frames was a lot of fun and painting uh, in Procreate like the little outside of the window scenes was a lot of fun as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this week's video. I had a lot of fun with it, but I will hopefully be posting another video next week. However, I might switch to every other week depending on how busy my schedule gets. I am do, like in my final year of my like research and, and dissertation work for my PhD and I'm teaching. So it's a lot of stuff going on in the background outside of just uh, making fun videos. Um, so I might go to every other week, but if I can film and do a project in an entire week and edit it and post it, I will try to do so. Otherwise, I'll try to do at least two a month um, of different little projects. So. Thank you so much for watching this week's video and I will see you guys next week.